Shivana Mahmood. Thank you, Dr. Speaker. I am grateful to be called to make a contribution to this important debate. Uh, and can I also congratulate the members for Wickham and Ilford North for securing uh, this debate today. I'm pleased that the debate has proved so popular with parliamentary colleagues, even if the unfortunate flip side is that we have a strict time limit for our contributions. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I wish to focus my comments on the situation in Kashmir um, as the member for Wickham, which is important to me both because my constituency and indeed Birmingham as a whole has a large British Kashmiri population, some of whom are here to watch the debate today and many of whom have written to me asking me to give voice to their concerns in the House this afternoon. But it is also important to me personally. I am myself of Kashmiri origin. My family originate from the Mirpur district of Pakistani-administered Kashmir. Both of my parents were born there. I still have family and friends who live there. And so the plight of Kashmiris and the necessity of finding a peaceful resolution to the Kashmir dispute has loomed large in my own life. Mr Deputy Speaker, for too long, the beautiful region of Kashmir, often described as paradise on earth, has been caught up in one of the world's most dangerous conflicts, it is a conflict which is little reported and often does not get the media and global political attention that it needs and deserves. I am grateful that the debate today has given us an opportunity to focus on this issue and I know that many British Kashmiris are also grateful to the work of the APPG on Kashmir and Sultan Mahmood Chowdhury, a former Prime Minister of Azad Kashmir, for their efforts to raise the profile of this dispute and to secure political debate and action. The failure to get a resolution to the Kashmir dispute and especially the failure to give effect to UN resolutions from the 1940s urging a plebiscite in Kashmir so that the Kashmiri people can determine their own future has resulted in an uprising in Indian administered Kashmir, the suppression of which, according to Amnesty International's A Lawless Law report, has led to grave human rights violations. This report highlights disturbing and unacceptable cases of abuse, with the application of the Jammu and Kashmir Public Safety Act 1978 in particular undermining efforts to achieve a peaceful resolution. Amnesty International found that in many cases where the Public Safety <coughs> Act has been applied, there were lengthy periods of illegal detention of political activists seeking Kashmiri independence in violation of both Indian national law as well as international law, with many cases featuring allegations of torture and other forms of ill treatment in coercing confessions. One of the most offensive features of the Public Safety Act is that it provides for immunity from prosecution for officials operating under it, thereby permitting impunity for human rights violations under the law. The application of this Act, together with the discovery of mass graves in Kashmir, the Mumbai attacks in 2008 and Kashmir's bloody summer of 2010, have undermined the prospects for a resolution in this dispute. I give way. way. I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady uh, giving way. It's a, it's a really passionate speech and I'm proud to be here to listen to it. Can I ask her, does she agree with me that India should accept the Commission on um, the, war, the mass graves um, in Kashmir? I'm grateful to my uh, honourable friend for her, uh, her intervention and I endorse her contribution. I know she's a passionate advocate of human rights on the Ind Indian subcontinent too. Mr Deputy Speaker, a resolution is needed both desperately and urgently. The world and especially the people of Kashmir cannot afford for India and Pakistan to be engaged in perpetual dispute over the region. The human cost is too great. Partition in 1947 between the two countries resulted in hundreds of thousands dead. In the three wars that have been fought between these two states, more than 15,000 people have died, and the estimates of the number of dead following the uprisings in Kashmir range from 40,000 to 100,000. Both countries spend too much of their budgets on defence, yeah. money which should be channelled to eradicate yeah. poverty, yeah. promote health and education, and indeed human rights. And both India and Pakistan have acquired nuclear weapons and so the fear that the hostility between the two countries, which springs from a mix of religion, history and territory, might change quickly into armed conflict is very real and never too far away. Meanwhile, the people of Kashmir continue to suffer. So resolution of the dispute in Kashmir both deserves and demands our attention and talks must be pursued by vigour on all sides. I give way. The Honourable Lady agree with me that this shows that we are not forgetting Kashmir, that the treatment of the people in Kashmir is key and we will not ignore that in the future. I, I, I'm very grateful for that intervention and I endorse uh, uh, the Honourable Member's comments and I am, as I've said, very grateful that we are having this, this debate today. 
Um, I said uh, that all sides uh, need to pursue uh, a resolution of the dispute with vigour because too often, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, the rest of the world sees only <coughs> India and Pakistan as the main contestants in this dispute. But it is my contention that it is the Kashmiri people themselves who are the central yeah, party yeah, 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 and should be treated yeah, yeah. as such, as it is their future that is the heart of this dispute. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I also think that the British Government has a vital role to play because of our history, but also because our country is home to large diaspora communities from India, from Pakistan and from Kashmir. And we therefore have a unique insight into the intricacies of this dispute and can play an important role in achieving its resolution. We should be a critical friend to both India and Pakistan and a strong advocate for the rights of Kashmiris. Mr Speaker, in conclusion, let me tell you that Kashmiris are a strong, a resilient, proud, generous and passionate people. Their land is a place of great natural beauty and potential. Their plight demands our attention and they deserve our efforts to bring the injustice they have suffered to an end. Thank you. Yeah.